The next item on the order paper is a motion on the private rental sector. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to 1 hour 30 minutes for this debate. The proposal of the motion will have 10 minutes to propose and 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have 5 minutes. Clerk, please read the motion. That this Assembly notes its concerns at the continued growth of the unregulated private rented sector, which is the biggest provider of socially rented accommodation, a sector which receives tens of millions of pounds in housing benefit but still has little legislation or <coughs> regulation, calls on the Minister for Social Development to review the role of the private sector in the provision of social rented accommodation to ensure it is fit for purpose, and further calls on the Minister for Social Development to introduce measures to regulate this sector. Thank you. And I call Mr. Fran McCann to move the motion. I rise to speak on this motion and to ask other members to support uh, the motion which highlights the serious problems which exist uh, within the private rented sector across the north. The motion speaks of concerns at the continued growth in the private rented sector to a position of being the biggest supplier of socially rented accommodation in the north. It also highlights the fact that this unregulated sector is in receipt of upwards of £300 million in housing benefit annually. It also calls on the Minister to move ahead with the promised review of the private rented sector, which he announced on the 6th of November 2014. Uh, this is, is too an important an issue not to have the Minister's full input uh, into its outworkings. In his statement, he spoke of the need to deal with this growing sector. He speaks of regulation required, uh, but where has this gone in the past year? And I just noticed uh, this morning in the minutes that uh, there is a briefing scheduled for the 10th of December, uh, which again sort of puts this whole issue on the long, the long finger. It would have been much better if the Minister had came here this morning and uh, took part in the debate to bring us up to date and tell us where he is going with this important issue. We need action to give confidence to a growing number of people being directed towards this, this sector. In 2006, there were 65,000 300 houses in the private rented sector. Uh, this has increased to over 130,000 in 2014. Uh, it brought a motion back in 2007 calling on the then Minister to implement the registration scheme, which was supported by this Assembly. In fact, it was the first of two motions on the subject. The second was defeated by those who believed the market should control this sector. Look where that got us. Sinn Féin has always argued for a robust legislative change to bring the private rented sector into line with other housing providers. Other parties have opted for a late touch approach to the sector. The introduction of the Landlords Registration Scheme, which had the final date of February 2015 to register, still has a way to go for full registration. It would be interesting to find out what action has been taken to penalise those landlords who have not ignored the deadline. It was my understanding that on March 20th, 39,000 landlords had registered who provided details of 85,000 private tenants, a shortfall of thousands, given there are an estimated 130,000 tenancies, or over 17 per cent of all households. A similar approach has been adapted to the protection of tenancy deposits. I understand that many thousands of landlords have joined the scheme, deposited millions of pounds, but again many thousands have ignored the scheme. We need to be told what action is being taken to deal with these landlords who ignore these pieces of legislation. How many have been brought to court and what has been the outcome of uh, those actions? We still have people coming through our advice centres that pay deposits and have them withheld when, upon leaving. Karja, I begin by saying that there are many within the private rented sector who provide high quality, decent houses for their tenants. And without them, the housing prices would be much worse. I have recently met with people from the private rented sector about problems in my West Belfast constituency and was impressed by the measures they have taken to deal with antisocial behaviour. They informed me that they had over 5,000 uh, homes on their books, both as landlord and their own right and as an agent, which is bigger than most housing associations. In fact, I will be meeting a representative from a landlord's association tomorrow to discuss some of the serious problems faced by my constituents in terms of conditions, misuse and sale of drugs, all night parties, attacks and the intimidation of their neighbours. I also wish to speak about how they can... Could I just ask you to move the microphone forward so you're speaking on it? Hands are struggling to keep up with your delivery. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry about that, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, I also wish to speak about how they can ensure 
that their members liaise with local elected representatives and community representatives to make their communities a better place to live. For the very good landlord who provide good accommodation and have invested in their stock, they need encouragement and help to deal with the problems and difficulties they face. There are many who would welcome dialogue to deal with these issues, but there are also many who provide poor housing and have little concern for their tenants' safety and welfare. In fact, many of the tenants I have spoken to over the years only tolerate the conditions and abuse because they would be on the street with nowhere to go. The payment of hundreds of millions of pounds to any other sector, department or statutory body would not be tolerated. The fact that this sector is unregulated, uh, unregulated makes matters worse. We have all heard how the community and voluntary sector is hounded over small grants they receive. They are heavily audited over several thousand pounds of pounds. Yet we have a sector which is only recently compelled to register their properties, who had to be forced into protecting the deposits of their tenants, which had been badly abused by many landlords and housing agents. Mr. Speaker, this is an issue which I have raised in this chamber before. It is an issue which I have said needs reviewed. I believe that the Minister was serious about moving on uh, a, on a root and branch review of this sector, but time is rolling on and still nothing has come to the committee which would give me uh, no hope that this issue will be sorted out any time soon. This sends out all the wrong messages to those who live in this sector. More than 130,000 units of accommodation are socially rented from this sector, more than the housing executive and housing associations combined. From 2011, all uh, local councils uh, carried out more than 15,000 inspections of private rental properties across the north. Across the north, about two fifths of these inspections resulted in notices being issued with nuisance abatement or public health notices, making up the majority at more than 5,400. These no notices were issued uh, because disrepair was deemed to be caused be causing conditions that are bad for health, such as damp and dry rot. Under the law, private rental properties must meet the basic minimum fitness standards, such as ensuring a property is structurally stable, has adequate lighting heating and ventilation and is free from dampness that could damage health. Many socially rented houses can't even reach these low standards. It is a fact that this sector remains by and large unregulated. There are those within this sector who just see the house they provide as a moneymaker with little concern for the person who lives in poor conditions. There are still those who do not provide rent books or tenancy agreements. There are still those who provide poor accommodation and threaten the tenant with eviction for asking for repairs to be carried out. There are still those who ignore all requests by their tenants for help, and there are still those who will intimidate and evict a person without fear of any consequences. There are those in the disability sector who have said they would like the option to go into the private rented sector because the accommodation would conveniently be close to family or cares, but the vast majority of privately rented accommodation is not disabled friendly. In fact, this sector has an atrocious record of provision of housing suitable for people with disabilities. We had the opportunity to deal with this in some of the previous legislation, but failed to do so. We need to cross the net and die and deal with this sector as soon as possible. And I call Mr. Loris Kelly. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the SDLP is supportive of this motion and uh, better regulation of uh, landlords now to declare an interest as being a landlord, but uh, not in the social rented sector at the moment. But Mr. Speaker, um, Mr. McCann has outlined very uh, real uh, problems facing his constituents, and I would suggest there are difficulties facing constituents right across the north. Each of our constituency offices would have had to enlist the support of the local authority to uh, force whatever and um, what limited uh, legislation is available to local authorities to ensure uh, that houses are uh, fit for purpose. It's not the first time that I've had to get environmental health or indeed building control out. But, the, but he is right in saying that it is a very limited um, regulation uh, and I think in particular, as we see many of the young people returning to university and students in particular having uh, to uh, uh, rent houses, which are quite often uh, lacking in many of the resources and uh, fitness, I think, to inhabit that they would find within a family home. 
Uh, so therefore, the need for regulation is one that has been on uh, the table for a very long time and, as Mr McCann said, it is most regrettable uh, that again the Minister isn't in his place because not only is there uh, increasing uh, concern and uh, the growth within the unregulated private sector, but there's a dearth of uh, proper accommodation for families and in particular I think for people with disabilities and certainly the list for disabled persons facilities and the delay in the provision of grant is ever increasing. So uh, I heard uh, the Deputy Minister make reference to how uh, they were holding out for better deals and, and right government, but I think uh, their uh, in out hokey cokey uh, position on ministerial positions has uh, backfired on them. Certainly the mood of the public and I think many of their own members feel very uneasy around it. So I would yet again prevail upon uh, the DUP uh, to uh, uh, get their ministers back in post. Uh, people are angry and fed up and there's much work uh, that requires uh, to be done. I, Mr McCann in his contribution also uh, made reference to the many good landlords and I think it would be fair to say that there is uh, a, 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 an organisation, uh, I think an association of private landlords which uh, highlights for the, for the rest of us and for themselves where they see some of the uh, glaring deficits in terms of the unregulation within the sector. For example, uh, letting agents and uh, the deposit scheme hasn't gone far enough in terms of regulation and there are some concerns around uh, some of the letting agents and what they say and do to potential uh, tenants. Uh, our party has, uh, Mr McCann tried to uh, suggest that other parties weren't as keen on regulation and had a light touch. I don't think that's the case. I think our pre previous ministers had introduced uh, better regulation around the landlord scheme and also uh, around better conditions and indeed uh, were the most successful ministries at tackling uh, the social uh, sector in terms of uh, need for families and for individuals requiring uh, proper and good affordable housing. But I think one of the concerns that I would like to raise, Mr Speaker, during my contribution would also be the issue of the affordable warm schemes and where the landlord uh, through the tenant if it's a social uh, rented sector can apply to the warm home scheme but th they don't have the level of surety that once uh, the house is upgraded or the home is upgraded that their tenancy is secure and that's something that we would like to see better regulation and guarantee around uh, uh, that that uh, would protect uh, tenants, uh, that there is an investment out of the public purse on the property and that I think should be reflected around some security of a tenancy uh, for uh, the occupants. Um, Mr Speaker, it is almost uh, something that we have said time and time again. We all know what many of the difficulties uh, are facing uh, the people in the community. It is something that crosses our constituency desk and yet we have an almost empty chamber and uh, uh, over a third or at least a third of our ministerial team not at work today. And I think that is something that the public mood is quite rightly angry about and it is something that we should uh, prevail upon. Uh, the DUP in particular to get back to work and get back to work right away. Roy Beggs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd firstly declare an interest as I have a son and a daughter uh, rent, who are students on renting property, and my eldest son, who has now started employment, is also renting, uh, and also my dad lets the property. This motion is calling for a review of the private rental social housing sector. I find it quite strange wording to call for a review when I understand a review is already uh, underway that the Minister announced almost a year ago. Uh, but yes, I agree the review does need to com come to a conclusion. Uh, there have been surveys and, and documents produced, but as of yet, no decisions as to how to move forward, and that rests with the Minister, whose seat is vacant. But in general, I rise to support the motion. The Landlord Registration st Scheme has started the process of identifying landlords. All landlords must register and agree that it's important that we uh, take the community with us and try and minimise legislation and cost. Um, we must regulate only where necessary and where it can make a difference. I wish to support the uh, informative process that has commenced for landlords, uh, which should benefit tenants. Landlords need to be aware of their responsibilities. It's better that tenants 
needs that are looked after uh, by the landlords rather than having to resort to law when failure and lack of understanding occurs. Uh, it's, it's good that there is uh, good practice advice being passed out through, through news sheets uh, to these uh, landlords who have registered, but many more still need to register. Um, the, the, the need for a basic tenancy statement, the, the running of the, the tenancy deposit scheme and to make sure that tenants' deposits are protected, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, the need to have annual gas safety checks. Yes, I will. Uh, what, what you're saying, and if you, if you cost your mind back uh, the last week's meeting, uh, when the, the issue of private uh, landlords came into the thing, it was one of the issues uh, that yelled everybody, and I know Stuart had questioned at length uh, the thing. But uh, it's not any time this issue has uh, uh, come up in the past, uh, people get up and talk about uh, minimal uh, legislation and that thing. But I think what happens is that rather than grasping the nettle and bringing in strong legislation, to bring them in the lane with other housing providers, we are missing a, 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 a beat and putting the issue on the And, and, and the member has an extra minute. Hello, Fran. Nearly oh, used yeah. it up on you. So, uh, if the member would allow me to develop my, my, my uh, thinking, um, I, I think it's also the right that we recognise the constructive role that the housing rights service, the essential role that they play for those tenants who uh, find difficulty with their landlords. I think it is a very vital service. Um, moving house is traumatic for all of us at the best of times, but someone who uh, has a roof over their head threatened, it's vital that they have good help and advice. And certainly, I would commend the Housing Rights Service for, for their knowledge and advice that given, they have given to both myself and, and to my constituents. Um, but I would recognise that the private rental sector pays uh, an option for many, an important option. Um, for some, the private rental sector prevents homelessness due to the long Northern Ireland housing sector uh, waiting lists. Uh, so we need to be careful what we do. And we, uh, as an assembly, do not have sufficient funds to build sufficient public houses, so we must work with the, the, public sec the private sector on this. And the huge number of uh, uh, rentals that are out there, some 17% of homes are now in this uh, private rental sector. So there must be a balance between the right of the landlord and those of the tenants. And we do, as others have said, have some very good landlords, and that is to be commended. But we also have some very bad ones, and, and who may fail to carry out necessary repairs. I think in my own constituency, if someone had difficulty getting a leaky roof fixed, someone else who had difficulty uh, uh, with the landlord in preventing uh, birds entering the roof space, uh, something that was annoying uh, the tenants, and it could be potential health uh, implications. Um, but I would support the uh, decision to move forward the Houses of Multiple occupant, uh, Occupations legislation first, whether I can agree that there would be higher risks, and it's right that we do that. Uh, it's also interesting that about 60% uh, of private landlords are paid from public funds, so clearly there is a, private, a public interest in this to ensure that they are delivering. There is uh, 8% of tenants who are dissatisfied with the service of their landlord and 14% dissatisfied with the repairs. Clearly, there is a need for improvement. We also need to ensure that everyone has a tenancy agreement, not the two-thirds here at present, and again, that the energy uh, performance certificates should be provided uh, when tenancy changes. So clearly, there is a need for improvement in the system. The uh, survey also revealed that many landlords were indeed uh, uh, Temporary landlords, perhaps many who uh, have, were wanting to sell their houses and um, um, were unable to do so uh, following the property crash, perhaps have become reluctant landlords. Um, and it's important that we uh, move fo carefully forward. Uh, we don't want them simply to take those rental properties off the market and create even a greater stress. But clearly, there does need to be movement going forward to address those who are failing tenants. Um, I, I believe that landlords should be completing repairs in a timely fashion and that they should be meeting the needs of tenants. So assessments of that, I think some sort of accreditation for landlords would be appropriate. Um, I think it's also that we consider other areas for regulations. Perhaps there is a need to uh, have electrical surveys uh, every so often. So this is an area where I believe regulation is needed, but we must go forward carefully. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it would be remiss of me also today, as others have done, uh, not to make reference to the 
uh, party before people absent minister in the House or lack of a minister in the House today. Uh, once again, an important debate taking place. Uh, people's homes, where people live, where they raise their children, where people with disabilities live, and yet we have a minister who is not prepared to come and join in that debate with us. I find that as shameful as the absence of the health minister in the crisis that people are facing in hospitals today. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank particularly those who have brought the uh, debate uh, to the Chamber because it is, as others have said, a, a vitally important issue that faces many of our and uh, my constituents and yet does not receive a great deal of public attention. We, we are currently experiencing a crisis in housing provision and it is hardly a day goes by that my office does not assist people desperate to access social housing and every day that we see that there is a critical shortage of the right kind of homes for people and quite sadly often the only solution is to point them towards the unregulated or virtually unregulated private rented sector. I do that with a heavy heart because I know the other side of that coin, Mr Speaker. I know what it is like to have to visit with an environmental health officer some of the most difficult properties that I think I have ever seen that families are forced to live in. On the brighter note, I also have to commend the work of the Housing Rights Service, um, particularly the advice and guidance which they give to tenants in the private rented sector, and particularly around the issues of rent and rent control. Uh, and I can cite a number of examples in my constituency where people have clearly benefited from the advice that has been given to them by the Housing Rights Service. We have uh, regulation in our social rented accommodation, uh, but uh, we now need to move to a much higher uh, standard of regulation when it comes to the private rented sector. Um, the key to solving this problem is, of course, in building more social housing. Uh, very different from the 1960s and 70s, when we did have a major building programme, um, and of course the housing executive and its predecessors made an amazing contribution uh, to uh, social housing in Northern Ireland. We also need smaller homes for today's needs, especially one-bedroom homes uh, for many um, elderly people. And the drive towards care in the community uh, and the context that that uh, and the pressure that puts on the, the, the social and indeed the whole housing market here in Northern Ireland. We also need to be cognizant of the fact that it looks as if uh, the Tory government intend to have a fire sale uh, when it comes to uh, further housing associations. And I want to put down a very clear marker, although perhaps not the content of this debate uh, today, to say that, as far as I am concerned, that is a no-go area for us in Northern Ireland. Of course, not all landlords uh, conform to the stereotypical, uncaring, unscrupulous rackmans of this world. And there are many landlords who provide uh, decent uh, homes in the private rented sector. However, it is important when you do see uh, the, uh, the situation that many people live in, the rents which they are required to pay, the inadequate heating systems that are in their properties, all of those things drive me towards the very clear conclusion that it is important that the Minister comes forward with appropriate plans to deliver regulation in the private rented sector. That, for me, is most important. We should not also forget the non-social renter, those people who are completely at the mercy of the private rental market. And here, too, regulation is lacking. Therefore, I proposed, but was not accepted uh, in today's debate, an amendment calling for an extensive review into the whole private rental market, including letting agencies. The, that was not selected, but I do think that it is an area which I hope the proposer will take account of in this debate today. Uh, particularly an issue around letting agencies where uh, landlords are only required to use one letting agent. and There is a very strong argument for multiple letting agencies to be allowed to deliver in a particular community. We are, and the United Kingdom has been seen as a nation of homeowners, but that is becoming less and less the case. Many young people are quite simply unable or pushed out of the housing market. As a result of renters and buy-to-lets, it has increased uh, uh, the detriment to those who wish to get their foot on the housing ladder. Uh, and it, so, 
In conclusion, uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to commend the uh, debate in the House today uh, and support the motion. Thank you. And I call Mr. Phil Flanagan to conclude and wind. But I must admit that it's, it's quite hard to wind in a debate that lasted for all of 25 or, or 30 minutes. So um, I have some comments my own to make, maybe more than responding to what a minister has or, or hasn't said. Um, like some other members, I, I'll declare an interest in the outset. But like all, some other members, I'm not a landlord nor connected to landlords. I'm actually a member of the, the private rented sector. Uh, like very many people in my generation, um, we, we don't own our own house. Um, we don't live in social housing. We live in the, the private rented sector. So I, I know firsthand uh, the difficulties that people living in the private rented sector face, um, and those pressures are growing. Uh, and the key issue before us today um, is the growth of the private rented sector, um, which remains unregulated uh, despite receiving considerable sums being paid to private landlords through housing benefits. So it's, it's my understanding that over £300 million a year is paid to landlords through housing benefit. Um, but yet those landlords aren't subject to any type of regulation to make sure that those tenants are being treated fairly. Um, now, there's no doubt that, that private landlords um, are needed um, and that they're here to stay. Um, but the growth in recent times um, can be explained by, by many reasons. Um, the reduced affordability of homes to buy over the last 10 years um, is a considerable barrier. When you link the average um, annual earnings of a family um, with the cost of buying a home, um, it's now less affordable to buy a home um, for, for this generation than at any time in the past. Um, the inavailability and inaccessibility of mortgages um, since the, the crash um, also presents another barrier in terms of um, people being able to buy their own houses, uh, but also in terms of developers um, and individuals being able to build additional um, homes, whether that is um, in a commercial sense um, or in their own land or in their own town or village. Um, as well as that, when you look at the, the scale of the number of social houses that have been sold off um, over the last 20 years, it um, has put serious pressure on the availability within social housing um, in that uh, more and more houses are being transferred out of public ownership into private ownership. But those houses aren't being replaced with new ones, um, and that is having serious pressure on um, the, local private rented, the, the local private rented sector um, as uh, supply is not increasing to meet demand. Um, and then the, the final uh, nail in the coffin is the, the declining investment um, in social housing right across the north. Um, and, and all of these issues, when you look at them collectively, um, explain why there are so many problems in the, the rented sector um, in our society today. Um, so what we're looking for here today is quite simple. We're not saying that uh, landlords shouldn't be allowed to operate. We're not saying that they shouldn't be allowed to make a profit. Uh, what we want to see is the introduction of proper regulation of private landlords. Many, many members have said that there are some good landlords. There are good landlords. I've lived in houses um, right across the north, which have been owned by very, very good landlords that you couldn't ask for more. Uh, but I've also lived in houses that have been owned by very bad landlords um, that treat um, their tenants with contempt, particularly in student housing, where there is very little regard given to the human rights of the people living in that house, where they are treated like dirt, um, and all they are seen, a, a, seen is a cash cow by landlords to maximise the income they can get. Um, and it is not good enough for us to stand back and allow that to happen, whether those people are students, whether it is young families, or whether it is older people that, for one reason or another, haven't bought their own house and can't get into um, social housing because of the, the way the point system works. Um, because there isn't enough social housing there to meet all of our demand. And in many areas, only those with a considerable number of points can actually get in um, to social housing. The, the, and, and some of the issues facing, facing people living in the private rented sector, they're, they're quite simple. There's legislation there stating that landlords have to keep rent books. Uh, I don't think too many people are complying with it. Um, there's now legislation introduced that um, an external organisation holds on to, to deposits, but I don't think that's been enforced properly the way it should be. Um, th those are all areas where we have introduced legislation here, uh, but they're not being enforced properly, usually by the local, the local authorities who have the responsibility for policing it. Um, and then you have landlords who think that when they get the deposit from a tenant, um, that that deposit is just money for nothing for the, the landlord. They don't seem to think that you have to hand that money back to the tenant at the end of the tenancy agreement um, if there's no damage done to the house. Landlords seem to think that's their money to hold on, and that's, that's the whole rationale 
for the introduction of the tenancy deposit scheme is to make sure that landlords aren't holding on to deposits when they have no legal basis for doing so. Um, and then you have situations where tenants are living in horrendous circumstances. Uh, they're not receiving fair treatment, as, as members like Roy Beggs have said, um, where, people, land, where private landlords don't come and carry out repairs um, in a, a speedy enough fashion. Uh, it can be something as straightforward as a light fixing. Um, it could be a shower being broke. Um, it could be a blocked sewer. All of these issues are things that landlords aren't stepping up to the plate quick enough. Um, and I suppose there's also some criticism that actually could be uh, thrown towards the housing executive as well. Uh, but that's a different matter. Um, I, I want to put on record a, a circumstance that I've had in the recent past uh, with a previous landlord of mine. Um, when I was evicted from the property because of a change in circumstances because of the landlord, um, there were numerous rules broken about how that process was taking place, and the landlord uh, completely flippantly thought that they could hold on to the deposit, um, that they could tell me when to get out of the house without providing written notice. Um, and th the way that, that landlords deal with their tenants is completely um, unacceptable, and it's for that reason that organisations like Housing Rights um, and Citizens Advice Bureau are there to help people. Um, and I want to put on record my thanks to the Housing Rights Service and to the Fermanagh Citizens Advice Bureau that helped me through a very difficult situation in trying to get a deposit back from a landlord. Um, we actually had to go through a, a process through the small, claim, small claims court to get money back from a landlord who had no legal basis for holding on to the deposit. And that's a situation that, that very many people face, uh, but unfortunately very many people are put off by the barriers that exist in terms of trying to access um, independent advice um, or having to go through the courts uh, to, to get your money back. So those are the types of barriers that we need to see removed in terms of getting people uh, their rights as tenants. Um, and we also need to see greater regulation so that tenants are being treated fairly by their landlords. And if you look at the, the, the difference between the situation in urban areas and rural areas, um, if you take many towns and villages across the north, um, there's a complete absence of um, alternative accommodation. So if you're put out of your house because your landlord couldn't keep up with their mortgage payments or because they've changed their circumstances and they want their son or daughter now to move into the house, um, or they have decided to sell the house because they're no longer in mortgage arrears and the, the price of the house has increased so they can sell it off and, and clear the mortgage. Um, you're faced with eviction through no fault of your own. There's very often no alternative accommodation for you um, and your young family in that area. And then what you're forced to do is because there's no alternative accommodation, uh, you then have to move town or village to live somewhere else. Um, and the knock-on impact of that is that your children then have to try and find alternative schooling arrangements. So the, the fact that tenants can just be thrown out um, for no reason with 30 days' notice um, is a huge barrier for people, that, some of them who want to live in the private rented sector, because the security of tenure just doesn't exist. Now, there's a, a unique culture, I think, in Ireland where people want to own their own house, and that's um, a laudable target. But if you go to, to some other European countries, um, it's, it's up and around 70 per cent where people live in the rented, um, in the rented market. Um, and I think most people accept once you die, you can't take the house with you. So an awful lot of people are happy to live um, in rented accommodation, but all they want is to be treated fairly, to have security of tenure, to know that they're not going to be thrown out for no reason um, at, at uh, a whim's notice. So you know, these are the issues we're trying to address. I think they're, they're very serious issues, um, but unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a, a huge pile of regard given, given to them by some people in this house. But I think on, on the whole, when you look at it, we are too reliant on the the private rented sector. We need to get additional investment into our social houses because we have actually got to a switch situation now where the private rented sector is the dominant force in the rental of houses. For the first time ever, they have a monopoly. There are now more houses rented privately than there are through the social housing structure. That is a situation we need to change. Um, we need to get additional investment into our social housing scheme um, because there is obviously money to be made from renting houses. Um, if there wasn't money to be made, why would there be so many landlords doing it? So the, the thing I can't understand is if there's money to be made, why doesn't the state do it? Um, do it in a way that treats tenants fairly, um, that their rights aren't abused, um, and then use the surplus or the profit that would be gained from renting out these properties to either reinvest in additional house building to meet future demand or to retrofit existing and older properties. It, that seems to make sense to me, instead of just throwing it out to the private sector to do what they want without any kind of regulation, without any kind of safeguards for people that are living in these houses. Um, and the emphasis here, um, if you look at the media, is that increasing house prices is a good thing. You know, that is that's what got us into this problem, is that house prices 
elevating was deemed to be a good thing. Now, it might be a good thing for developers, for speculators and financiers, but it's not a good thing for families, and it's not a good thing for society, and it's certainly not a good thing for the rented sector, because very many people are being priced out of it. So we, we need to see additional regulation being brought in to protect tenants, um, to make sure that they're not being treated unfairly by landlords. The question is that the motion standing in the order paper be agreed. All those in favour, say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it.